Hey, everybody. Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 4th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You see the Pacific Northwest right here. We've got some of that southeasterly flow aloft still. we got this next system out here over the open ocean, creeping and crawling towards our coastline. This is going to be impacting us as we go through the next few days on in through the weekend, and we'll take a look at what kind of impacts we're going to get for that. We're going to look at some of the fire smoke here across the region. We've got a lot of active fires, some very dry conditions. Look at precipitation amounts as we go through the next week as well. And let's dive into that here this morning. Now, taking a look here, this is a going through yesterday on the mid-level water vapor. We can see the Wildcat fire and the Sugarloaf fire each produced their own lightning yesterday. Just the fires themselves produce thunderstorm activity there. And you can see kind of the western periphery of that monsoon moisture, that little bit of a meso low there, causing some lightning as we went through the day yesterday across western Oregon. And it continues to move up there. And then you see the next system I talked about. You can see some lightning associated with that as it crawls towards the coastline. It's going to kind of leave us in an unstable, warm flow here across much of the Pacific Northwest. More on that here in a moment but let's go all the way back towards yesterday morning and you can see we woke up there was some smoke out there more clouds across oregon versus washington and if we scroll through the day you can kind of see that burn off the lower level the stratus layer across western washington for a mostly sunny day there british columbia as well eastern washington but then the smoke really started to get ramped up across the wildcat fire look at this pyrocumulus cloud that this fire produced it also produced its own lightning strike at least one of them and the sugarloaf fire last night was producing lightning also and then we scroll back on towards this morning and you can see we've got a, quite a bit of smoke out there and that's going to be drifting across the state for the next couple of days. Some areas worse than others as far as surface smoke is concerned. And you'll kind of see that reflected here as we go through the day today and tonight and kind of see the Cascades East, Northeast Washington, the Columbia Basin there. Oregon, not as bad as Washington for surface smoke as we go through Friday morning. We go on into Saturday here as well. And kind of the same theme remains as we have uh, Southwest BC, Western Washington, Western Oregon, not doing too bad as far as surface smoke is concerned, especially once you get up across some of the higher terrain and off into eastern portions. But if we look at that smoke aloft, look at this over the next couple of days, we're going to kind of be in that southeasterly flow aloft. So it keeps some of that smoke across the region. And this is really going to kind of mess up the high temperature forecast here. It's not going to allow some places to get as warm as we previously thought with all that smoke. Of course, it blocks out some of the sun. But look at this by Saturday morning. The entirety of Washington is just kind of cloaked in this smoke layer, British Columbia as well. But again, not not too bad at the surface west of the Cascades. And if we look at the drought monitor here for Washington, Oregon, big differences once you go across from southeast Oregon. Some moderate and severe drought does exist for northern Oregon. And you can see some extreme drought for the east slopes and some of the Cascades here across the ridge tops here. The Pacific Coast Trail would go through some of that extreme drought there as well. And that's just north of the Wildcat Fire, but that would be including the Sugarloaf Fire. So we are very dry across the region. That's why we're kind of concerned about these ongoing fires. The good news is we're going on through September, and we start to eventually get a seasonal change here across the region. Let's hope it does indeed come as we go through this month. Now, the Drought Monitor also put this out. Spokane National Weather Service talking about this, the drought information. But yeah, they know it's dry out there. It was a drought emergency still ongoing for the state of Washington. So yeah, you can kind of see a little bit closer view of that extreme drought. So anyway, looking at lightning strikes yesterday, you can see again, there's the Wildcat Fire and the Sugarloaf Fire. The only thunderstorms yesterday across the state of Washington were produced by forest fires. We had some of that lightning activity across portions of Oregon as well. And this is going to be a recurring theme here over the next couple of days. And the Tempest Weather Station, I checked out some of the Tempest near the Wildcat Fire there in Washington. And right here, uh, I believe this is, there's Goose Prairie right here. And this is just to the east of 410. You're down towards Highway 12 there. And if we look, each one of those weather stations did pick up some lightning activity from that wildcat fire yesterday so very fun weather station if you want one of those click on the link down below to save 10 percent off now this is where we are currently this is the hawaiian islands the bottom left there is a pacific northwest we've got a ridge extended back up across the region so you can imagine that southeast flow and why that smoke aloft is staying across a lot of the area and there's that storm system out over the pacific ocean creeping and crawling towards the coastline there it's not too impressive but it is going to keep us kind of in this unstable flow there bringing some some precipitation, not a lot, but then we get this next piece of this trough kind of rolling through here as we go through the early portion of next week. Hoping for better precipitation amounts out of that, we really need to start suppressing these fires and at least, if nothing else, we'll kind of cancel the warm conditions coming up here and at least the fires won't have an unstable environment to work with. And then what happens after that is kind of up in the air, but we'll take a look at the extent of forecast at the end of the video. So heat advisory still remains for some of the interior areas across western Washington. Red flag warnings continue across the Cascades and look at this dense fog advisory for the 
immediate Washington coastline there. You go inland and you got some extreme heat warnings. You can see Sunnyside and Pasco. There's Moses Lake. Lewiston, Idaho is included in that also. And some heat advisories that do include places like Spokane and Ritzville. Now, thunderstorm activity. They do have some of this creeping out across some of the west of the Cascades. I'd be surprised to see that on the day today, but they, they have it out there. And then day two and day three continues to have much of the Pacific Northwest under the gun of some thunderstorm activity. Isolated dry also potentially as, as well today because you could get some additional lightning strikes depending on how those fires you know, behave today. There's been some very extreme fire behavior with both of those fires. You know, I, I was watching it last night and you can kind of see the fire its entirety of the wildcat fire just flaring and flickering and ebbing and flowing just i couldn't see the main flames but you could really see the glow behind the ridge just going kind of nuts so there could be uh, a dry thunderstorms again so we could have some new fire starts here over the next couple of days also now significant uh, fire potential. This is uh, for on through Saturday. It's kind of the danger period here. Actually, Sunday, we should say for some areas. But as we get towards next week, hopefully we get down towards lower risk here and we can start to switch things up and suppress some of these fires. Now, I want to show you the thunderstorm potential as we go on through the day Saturday. You see some of this creeping out across northwest Oregon, southwest Washington as we go through the day Saturday, coming across some of the Kitsap Peninsula. Again, southwest Washington, western Oregon under the gun there. And you can see some of this in stability maybe moving up towards the seattle metro as we go through saturday evening washington coast we'll see how this goes the high resolution models start getting in range here over the next day or two and if we look at the european you can kind of see that cape really start to build up here as we go on in through this weekend look at that cape there across some of northwest oregon and portions of western washington as we go so yeah thunderstorm potential even west of the cascades coming up here and if we look at the north american model let's see what kind of agreement we have you can kind of see that trough reaching out there towards the Oregon border, California border, keeping us in the southeasterly flow at 18,000 feet. There it is. And then our next trough starts to approach. It's dropping down to the south here as well. So that may keep us with some thunderstorm potential as we go on in through this weekend. But hopefully this trough will cool. It will, it will cool us down here and it will start to suppress some of the fire activity. But we need more of these troughs. You're not just going to be able to swing one trough through here and just declare an end to the fire season, contrary to what some local weather bloggers may leave Need you to believe now total precipitation in inches we're going to scroll through here as we go on in through the day saturday night into sunday these precipitation amounts are not going to do it folks these are scattered and they are not very heavy at all as we go on into the day sunday but then the next portion of the trough starts to arrive as we go on in through next week a little bit better amounts but you can still see some portions of the central and northern cascades not getting too much relief and this is going to be isolated heavier amounts so this is not going to do the trick we're not just going to be able to wake up on wednesday morning and just kind of declare the fire season over we need more help after that but some of the long-range models are pointing at that help potentially coming and if we look at the artificial intelligence model Again, as we go through the early portion of next week, probably not enough to do it by the time we get towards Wednesday. But if we continue that and bring additional rounds of troughing, I mean, this looks like a pretty robust system into uh, British Columbia there. So that would be beneficial there as well. Hopefully that can get a bit further south. And you can kind of see, uh, you know, we bring some precipitation in here and let's just hope that we don't eventually build some ridging and get some offshore winds as we go through the month of September at some point without at least getting some precipitation to help squelch some of this fire activity. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel here, but you don't want to get too happy just yet. And if we look at the wider view of things here, long range look at stuff, there's that initial trough. Second one sweeps through as we go through next week. Kind of hanging out for a bit. Glad to see it. Next trough is out here. Let's hope this one continues to be progressive and starts to move into the Pacific Northwest and doesn't allow any ridge to build in front of this trough as we go on in through, you know, the week to 10 day period shown there. And then some other transient ridge tends to move in there. There. So let's hope these ridges don't get established to become blocking ridges or anything as we move through the month of September, because we can still have fire danger through the month of September, no doubt. And this is the artificial intelligence ensemble mean uh, as we go through day 15. So it does show some potential for precipitation coming here. But again, we'll be watching this on a daily basis. This is bound to change, no doubt. Now, this is looking at, uh, this is today and tomorrow. You can kind of see by uh, Friday, you can see why they have the uh, 
not the heat advisory across interior portions there. Some upper nine, upper 80s showing up for some of the foothills there, but the smoke again is going to be really playing havoc with some of these temperatures. And you see some of the interior valleys up there across the whole mission Skagit County are even into probably the lower 90s there also. So that's why the heat advisory is in effect there in eastern Washington, nice and warm, warm as well. Wider view of things here. This is uh, Thursday, September 4th. That's today. There's Friday. There's Saturday. There's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You see the troughing around here, hopefully holding the those temperatures down and trying to you know trying to cure this fire season eventually now the gfs this is temperature anomaly for today and we go on in through friday so we got a few more days of some very warm conditions especially across british columbia northeast washington eastern washington but at the time we get towards next week you can see things starting to switch up and hopefully we just get these above normal temperatures the heck out of here and we start bringing precipitation back across the region keep your fingers crossed for that but yeah it does look a bit promising as we head towards the mid portion of September and there's the six to ten day kind of a mixed bag there and then the above average signal does look good there on the climate prediction center but again we'll be checking back on that daily eight to fourteen day again at kind of a mixed bag and the above broad brush signal as we go through September 17th and check out the Patreon page if you want to throw a couple of your hard-earned bucks towards the channel that is the way to do it Patreon allows the creators to keep close to 90 percent of what you donate so anyway hope you guys are having a good day otherwise we will continue to do this on a daily basis and break everything down um click like and subscribe i will talk to you guys again tomorrow